My God, John, the seventh chapter. Thank you, Jesus. John, the seventh chapter. Amen. To those who, amen, don't read your Bibles, it's behind Luke. John, the seventh chapter, we thank God, amen, for, amen, our other daughter, Jennifer, being with us. Amen. On today, her and the little one. Amen. Little chubby. Amen. <laughs> amen. And we thank God. Amen. Amen. For my little niece, India. Amen. She's bigger now. But there was a time I used to whoop her when she was smaller. Amen. They stayed with us. Amen. They know we didn't tolerate no nonsense. <laughs> Amen. We had them marching to school in order, orderly ranks. Get down there to the school and get back. And be quiet when you come in the house. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I salute you, saints to God. Amen. She's a young, beautiful, intelligent woman. Amen. Now. And God want to use her. Amen. And we thank God for her. Amen. For her life. John the seventh chapter. Thank God for Deacon Turner, Deacon Cunningham, Minister Turner. Uh, Cunningham, and we thank God for Mother Gillum, my own wife, and help her. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for Sister Davis. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that voice that God has given her. In John 7, chapter verse 37 through 39, it will be the three key scriptures that I will deal with on today. And thank God for my brother. Amen. If God said the same, Soon to be wife. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for her coming with us on today. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. We give God praise and we salute all the saints of God. Sister Erica, we thank God for you. We love you with the love of God. It's good to see the saints' face back in the house of God. Now, saints of God, when somebody don't, somebody don't see you, they get concerned. But sometimes we draw strength from each other. John the seventh chapter verse thirty seven through thirty nine. Could you please say, I have, I have it. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believe on me as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Look at your neighbors and neighbor. If you want rivers of living waters, you must first come to Jesus. Come on, say neighbor. If you want rivers of living water. You must, first you must first come to Jesus. Come, to Jesus. come on, say neighbor. neighbor. If you want rivers of living water, you, rivers of living water. You, must first you must first come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Amen. Saints of God, last Sunday we left off with Jesus being at the well with the Samaritan woman yes. and Jesus offering this woman rivers of living water. And saints of God, I want you to understand that just like back then, when Jesus was offering this woman rivers of living water, he is still offering rivers of living water on today. Saints of God, I think that we have to do our part. Because sometimes God is offering us living waters, but we do not make any move towards God. God has so much in store for you, saints of God. There is so much that God want to do with your life. God don't want you to remain in a place that you're in right now. God is calling. Just like back then at the well, when Jesus went to the well to meet the Samaritan woman, Jesus is coming to your well right now this morning. I don't know what well you may be in right now. You said, well, man of God, you don't understand what I went through last night. And you say, you don't understand the darkness and the hell that I'm going through right now. You say, I'm going through an emotional roller coaster, emotional battle right now. You say, I'm what? Wait, first I feel like I'm up, the next minute I feel like I'm down. You say, I don't know if I'm going or if I'm coming. Yeah. But saints of God, Jesus has come this morning to meet you at your will. Yes, 
Jesus will meet you at your well. I, I don't know what well you at this morning, but Jesus will meet you right at your well. And I told you that Jesus is still making the same reply. Come to me. That's all we got to do, saints of God, is come to Jesus. We make things so difficult, saints of God. We make it so hard. But the only thing Jesus is saying is for you to come to me. Yeah. If you come to me, I give you rivers of living waters. Oh, yeah. He said, if you come to me, he said, I will deliver you. He said, if you come to me, he said, I will destroy the yoke that's on your life. He said, if you come to me, he said, I will break the chain yeah. and break the feather and lift the body and remove the body. But when Jesus gives the call, we sit with our hands folded. We said we want to come out, but when Jesus gives the call, we don't make no motions towards God. When Jesus said, I saved you, I redeemed you, I bring you out, guess what? We don't make any motion toward Jesus. The saints of God, Jesus is crying out just like he was crying out back then. Come, I'm going to give you rivers of the river waters. Yes. We got to make a motion towards God. He said, draw near to me. And I'll draw near to you. See, it ain't all about God coming where you in. Because God has come as far as he's going to go dealing with you. God has come get right in your face. And said, come to me. And we still sit there with our hands folded. But baby, can I tell you something? If you don't come to Jesus and get rivers of living water, you're going to stay down in depression. You're going to stay down in Egypt. You're going to stay down in Babylon. You're going to stay down in confusion. You're going to keep on having no mind balance. So you're going to stay bound. You're going to keep on having addictions. Burdens are going to still be on your chest. The devil's going to still be on your head. The chains are still going to be on your feet. When Jesus called, you got to come to him so he can give you rivers. Yeah. I believe in the water. Yeah. 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 Ye
And they had to build themselves huts. And they had to live inside of the huts for eight days. Now, what will God tell them to do this? Because the Feast of Tabernacles really means the Feast of Huts or Boots. Because they built them little boots and they built them little huts and them, them and their family stayed inside. Now, why was God doing it? What was God telling them? I want you to do this every year as a reward. The reason why is because God said, I want y'all to remember when I brought y'all out of Egypt. Yeah. And when y'all was in the wilderness, y'all stayed in tents. Mm. He said, y'all didn't have any houses. He said, y'all stayed in tents. He said, I want you to do this every year to remember when I brought you out of Egypt and I brought you into the wilderness and y'all stayed in tents. Yeah. Now, thanks to God, he said, I want y'all to remember this, that y'all didn't have no houses, but y'all stayed in tents. He said, not only this, but I want y'all to remember when I brought y'all out of Egypt and y'all didn't have no water and I made water call the water. Yeah. Yeah. This was a time of remembrance. For us to remember what God had did for us. Some of us say to God, if we just can reach back and remember what God did for us, it won't be hard for us to call out to God for rivers of living water. But say to God, while they was there in the wilderness, they were thirsty, didn't have no water to drink. There was no wells in the wilderness. But God made water come outside of the rock. When you read in the New Testament, the Bible said that they rock that followed them with Jesus. Even when they was in the wilderness, Jesus was giving them H2O from the rock. Do you hear me say he want to give you rivers of living water. He said, I want you to remember yes, Lord. when you didn't have anything to drink. And I stepped in and I became your water. Yes. He said, I want you to remember when I was your provision. He said, when you didn't have anything to drink, God sent down manna. Yes. Every day they got up, it was manna. The Bible said when they went and picked them off the ground, when you bit into it, it tastes like waffles and honey. Do you hear me say, God? This was angel food. When you get to Psalms, the Bible said me and a angel's food. Yeah. So when they was in the wilderness, God was sending down matter every morning. He said, I want you to understand that I was sending down matter. And matter means, what is it? Because sometimes when God provides for you, you say, what is it? You say, how did this happen? When did this happen? Do you hear me say, God? He said, I want you to Matter. And saints of God, some of us should be shouting and praising God because God will thank you for that. When I didn't know what to do, when I didn't know how to bear for going to pay, when I didn't have any money in my pocket, God just stepped in and gave me more than that. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He said, I want you to remember about the matter. The people got to complaining. They said, We want some meat to eat. There was no malls in the wilderness. There was no Mojo's restaurant in the wilderness. There was no Popeye's and KLC in the wilderness. They said, God, we want some meat. So God sent a strong east wind. And when God sent a strong east wind, the Bible said that the wind blew in quail. The people eat barbecue quail, baked quail, fried quail. When it was down there in the wilderness. When that was in the wilderness, God made something out of nothing. And God said, I want you to remember what I provided for you. Saints God never forget when God provided for you. Yes. Never forget when you didn't know what you was going to do, how God stepped in. Now, you might ain't told nobody, but there have been some time that, I, that me and my wife back have been against the wall, and we didn't know what we were going to do. We didn't know what a provision was going to come from, but your whole job is going to be in here. Because he is your provider. Yes, yes, the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Remember yes, Lord. when you was intense. Yes, Remember, you yes, Remember you didn't have no house. Remember you didn't have no house. Remember, you didn't have three bedrooms. So you got to go back. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. Don't forget what God did for you. Remember when you had a little hut. Remember when you had a one bedroom. Come on, say to God. Remember when you didn't have what you had right now. But God stepped up in. Do you hear me say to God? He said, I want you to remember. How soon we forget the glory of God. them because they're inside of the tent. The tent represents shelter. Yes, it represents God being your refuge. Yes. 
Remember what God had to hide you in his pavilion. Yes. Remember what God had to hide you in his secret place. Remember what God had to hide you from the, the feathers of his wings yes. and keep you from danger, seen and unseen. You didn't wake up this morning because you were so strong or because you were so tough, but you woke up this morning because God was your shelter. Yes. When you was in the secret place. Oh, yeah. We heard the word of God as word that said, don't move out of the secret place. When you go through your weirdest experience, don't move out of the secret place. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Remember, y'all stayed in tents. Mm. God said, I want you to remember this every year. I want y'all to have this peace every year. I want y'all to celebrate every year. And this is the reason why come, we come into the house of God. We celebrate every year. Do you say, God, I praise you. God, I magnify you. God, I worship you. God, I honor you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Remember, you was intense. Remember, I gave you water out of rock. I gave you manna. I gave you quail. The Bible said that for 40 years, they shoes, they sandals didn't wear out. They clothes didn't wear, out. didn't wear out. The Bible said Moses was 120 years old. The man's eyes wouldn't even be on. He still was able to see. At 120, God told Moses, he said, I want you to get ready to come up one more time. He said, but this is going to be your last time. He said, you come up, you think you're ready to die. But he said, climb this mountain one more time. At 120 years old, Moses was climbing the mountain he did it because God is your sustainer. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. God, I Still got my strength. Still got my wisdom. When I sustained you, mm. it wasn't your strength, I sustained you. Yes. Remember when I protect you. When the Amalekites came into the wilderness to try to try to attack the children of Israel, God raised up Joshua to go out to fight them, but God was the protector. Oh, yes. Saints of God, remember when God was your protector? Yes, Lord. I wept yesterday when I thought about a long time ago. I had no reason to lie to you. Everything I say to you is real. And I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal. I'm just telling you what God brought me from. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. I just want to give God the glory. I remember a long time ago that I was having a shootout with some guys. And I went to the house. And later on that day, I was sitting there at nighttime. I said, well, let me get up and go back around my homeboy house and, and get my pistols. He stayed on the next street. I went, jumped the fence behind my house, jumped the other fence and walked to his house, knocked on the door. When I knocked on the door, he didn't come, he wasn't there. I turned around to walk back out, and this guy ran up on me with a pistol, the same guy I was in tour with, and got to pull on the trigger in my stomach. The gun wouldn't even go off, I was froze. I gotta be truthful with you, saints of God. That's the first time that a person that pulled a pistol me and got to pull the trigger, he was stuck pulling the trigger. And the guys with him said, shoot him. And he was steady pulling the trigger. And God gave me some strength and I broke. Do you hear me say, God? But I was thinking about when God was my protector. Do you hear me say, God? All the devil was on my trail. But then he said, God, God stepped in because God was my protector. Yes, yes, God. I don't even supposed to be here. My wife can tell you. Say, God, I was in a shootout again. In a parking lot at the club. Shootout with some guys. Got through having a shootout, we jumped in the car. When we was pulling off, they shot with a 20 gauge Marshboro with slugs. It hit the back of the trunk, broke off, and hit me in my back. Saints of God, if that slug would have broke off, my wife right here, she can tell you. The, the, the spot is still by my spinal cord. It was one inch from my spinal cord. The slug broke off, hit me in my back. If that slug would have went straight through the trunk and hit me with one of my back and blew my chest out of the back seat, but my God wasn't protected. I was afraid of me. Do Some of y'all to do. Bullets will fly, 
You ain't gonna tell nobody. No booty will fly over your head. Booty will fly in your house. But God kept you because your God is your protector. I want you to remember. We don't want nobody to know where we came from because we don't want to give God the praise. But I don't care what you know about me. I'm gonna give God all the praise. I want you to remember when I protected you. Oh, yeah. He said, I want you to remember there was a pillar of cloud over their head by day oh, yes. to guide the way. God said, don't forget that I was guiding you all the way. All God was guiding you even when you weren't serving him. You hear me, says God. He said, I want you to remember that I guided the way. It was a pillar of cloud by day and it was a pillar of fire by night. Why did it turn to a pillar of fire by night? It turned to a pillar of fire by night. Why did give them light? To give them illumination. Because God, I need illumination. Sometimes when you're going through the wilderness of life and it's dark, you need illumination. Sometimes when you're going through life and you're having problems in your marriage, you need illumination. Sometimes you're having problems on a job and you need illumination. Sometimes you're having problems in your family and says, God, you need illumination. Listen, don't forget. Yes, Lord. That was your illumination. Oh, yes. And this is the reason why they was having the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. So praise God for all this. Oh. And then the last day, they said that the priest would get some water and put it in a gold bowl. And they said he would take the gold bowl and he would pour out the water. Mm -hmm. Represent God, represent living waters. Represent God being the well of water. Yes. The well of living water. But before he could pour it out, Jesus cried out, Come to me! All ye that won't Rivers of living water. He said, why y'all pouring out waters? It's talking about rivers of living water when I am living water. Yes. I'm the giver of living waters. Yes. Sometime in the midst of the feast, we forget about Jesus. Yes. They took Jesus up at Passover when he was 12 years old. Family took him up. While they was there in the feast of Passover, they had the Passover lamb right there with them, Jesus. Uh -huh. They left Jesus and forgot that he was with them. Sometime in the midst of us celebrating, and coming to the house of God, having feast, and in the midst of us praising God, we forget about Jesus. Yes. Sometimes we come into the house of God, and our mind is on everything else. We say, Jesus. We hear the saints go, oh, don't forget about Jesus. The last day of the feast, he said, come to me. I am living waters. Oh, my God. He stood and cried. Oh, yeah. Which means he screamed. Yeah. Now, this cry, saints of God, means to have deep emotions. Oh my God. Now listen to this, saints of God. This cry means to cry out loud with an urgent scream using inarticulate words. Mm -hmm. I said this cry is a cry that's screaming out, but you're using inarticulate words. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said this, he was not trying to be articulate. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're trying to be too articulate. Mm -hmm. And we want to say every word right. Do you even sense God? But when Jesus gave this cry, this was not for those who are so intelligent. Yes. This cry was for those who can hear him, who had an ear to hear what the Spirit was saying yes. unto them. Do you even sense yes. God? We can't be concerned about being so articulate. We got to be concerned about hearing the voice of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And God, I don't care how you say it, I want to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. I want to hear you calling me unto living waters. He said, To some of you today, Jesus is saying, come. He said, come unto me. Oh, my God. He said, if any man thirst, if you thirst, yeah. come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Thirst means to desire earnestly, which means, he said, if you really got a desire to come out of this situation, he said, come. He said, if you're really thirsty, he said, come. I'm not talking about that other kind of thirst that the world is talking about. But Jesus said, if you're really thirsty, he said, come. He said, if you're really tired of going through what you're going through, if you're tired of going through hell and high water, and you're tired of being in darkness, and you're tired of being in confusion, he said, I want you to get ready to come. You hear me say, come. So you got to be thirsty for God. Yes. Thirst. In the English means a dryness in the throat and a dryness in the mouth that makes you want water. See, sometimes God got to pour salt in your mouth, so to speak. You put salt, salt in the person's mouth, they get real thirsty. 
And some of you right now in your life, God is putting a little salt in your mouth. Why? Because God is trying to make you thirsty. You say, listen, I'm just tired. You say, I'm, I'm tired of trying. You say, I don't know what to do right now. You say, I'm just tired. I'm tired of everything. But God is trying to get you thirsty. So he said, God, you cannot get waters from Jesus. If you don't first of all admit that you're thirsty. Yes, yes, Lord. In a natural, when you're thirsty, you have to admit it. You have to go to the fountain and get some water. Because you're thirsty. In the spiritual, you can't get real living water until first of all, you admit it. And since God, you gotta be able to admit it that Jesus, I need you. You have to be able to admit it that I came back to without you. You have to be able to admit it that God don't know which direction to go. And God, I need you. I need El Shaddai. I need the great God. I need the little of the daddy. I need the one and only son. I need Jesus. I need the occupation of my life. I need Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can't sit with your mouth closed. You can't sit with your hands folded because God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. But since you got to be open your mouth and say, God, I need you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I can't make it without you. Oh my God, yes, Lord. Come to me, all oh, you that are thirsty. Mm-hmm. That you want eternal life. Yes. You want rivers of living water. You want to be delivered. You want to be set free. You want to come out the darkness that you in. He said, come to me, ye that thirst. And saints of God, can I tell you, I'm thirsty for God. See, this kind of thirst you can't get on your own. This is the thirst that God has to supernaturally give you. And this kind of hunger that I'm talking about, you can't get this kind of hunger on your own. But God got to give you this kind of hunger. You got to ask God for this kind of thirst. You got to ask God for this kind of hunger. Say, God, make me thirsty for you. God, make me hunger for you. You don't get this thirst on your own. You don't get this hunger on your own. But God got to put this kind of hunger down inside of you. God got to put this thirst inside of you. But you got to ask God. I say, God, make me thirsty for you. I say, God, make me hungry for you. I say, God, make me pen out there. Let me chase you, oh God. God, give me your heart. God, give me the reward. You got to talk to God. Come to me, all ye that thirst. Let them come unto me and drink so you can receive. He that believe on me, you got to believe on Jesus before you can get rivers of living water. Buddha ain't gonna do it. Confucius ain't gonna do it. Muhammad ain't gonna do it. Bumpy face ain't gonna do it. Tough Willie ain't gonna do it. Earth and Drug ain't gonna do it. Marvin ain't gonna do it. Big Bone Brenda ain't gonna do it. You gotta call on Jesus. You gotta believe in Jesus. If you don't get rivers of living waters, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I need rivers. I need rivers of living waters. Believe in me. Believe on me. As the scripture has said. You got to do it the way that the word said. You got to do it the way that the scripture said. That you got to believe on Jesus. Now saints of God, we can't say we believe on Jesus and we don't serve him. We can't say that we believe on Jesus and we have not submitted our lives to him. We can't say we believe on Jesus and we're not even trying to do what God has called us to do. But saints of God, when you believe on Jesus, that means that you submit to the teachings of Jesus. He said, if you believe on me as the scripture has said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Now saints of God, what was he talking about living waters? He was talking about the Holy Ghost. Since God, I told you last Sunday that you can't worship God if the Holy Ghost don't live down inside of you. I told you last Sunday that you really can't serve God unless the Holy Ghost is down inside of you. I told you last Sunday that you can't break out addiction unless the Holy Ghost is living down inside of you. He said, I want to give you rivers. Yes, Lord. Only Lord. Yes, Lord. Out of your belly. Yes. Your belly is your inner man. Oh, yes. It's the inside of you. You need the Holy Ghost to live down on the inside yes, of you. Lord. 
you need God to get down on the inside of you. All the storms that's brewing in your spirit, you need the Holy Ghost to come down inside of you. Out of your belly, your belly is your inner man. Your belly is your heart. When you live with your heart, that's your belly. You say, out of your belly, out of your inner man. Your heart is your passions, your emotions, your desires, your affections, and your appetite. See the appetite that you got? That's your heart. Those desires that you got? That's your heart. Them emotions that you got? That's your heart. Your mind and your will, that's your heart. When the Bible speaks about the heart, it's not speaking about the physical organ, but it's speaking about the inner man. It's speaking about that person that's down on the inside. When it speaks about the heart, it's speaking about your appetites. God, I need rivers of living water because sometimes I have the wrong appetites. Come on, say to God. Sometimes, say to God, I got the wrong emotions and the wrong passions. Come on, say to God. Your appetite is so strong for the things outside of God. Because my appetite used to be so strong for things outside of God. You say, well, man of God, how did you deal with that? I had to come to Jesus. I had to let Jesus give me rivers of living water so God can deal with my appetite. Some of us got the wrong appetite for certain things. But if you call out to Jesus, Jesus will come in and deal with your appetite. You need rivers of living water. Your emotions. Yes, yes, I'm an emotional roller coaster. I'm like I'm on a yo-yo. Up and down, up and down, up and down. You know what? My emotions. So angry. Go off for the slightest thing. Can't get along with nobody. Because my emotions are jacked up. And I can't, I can't get control over my emotions. And I don't know what to do about my emotions. And I don't know what to do about my appetite. I keep going back there. My appetite is keeping me going back to places I don't want to go back to. Yes. I'm back over here again. Mm. I hate this, but I'm back over here again. And now he's touching me again. He's missing my spirit up again. I know that this man really don't love me, but I got a strong appetite for him. Why? Because I'm back over here again. Mm. I got an emotional soul tied to this man or to this woman, and I'm back over here again. It seems like when they leave away from around me, I get sick. You know why? Because now you got a soul tie. You done tied your soul up yeah. into the life of somebody else. You hear me say this, And now your appetites and your emotions and, and your passions and it's up inside of them. Huh? And you say, I can't break away from them. Huh? Every time I try to break away, huh? I find myself going back. Huh? Every time I try to leave, huh? I find myself going back. Huh? You say, how do I break out of the man of God? Huh? And where they go, I go. Where they go, I go. Where they go, I go. They got a chain around my neck. You come with me. And, and you ain't nothing. And you know I don't love you. And I'm not going to marry you. I'm going to keep on giving you promises. I'm going to keep taking you around in circles all your life. You're 25 years old, same old things. 28 years old, same old things. 30 years old, same old things. 33 years old, same old thing. God, when is he going to change? God, I want to do better. But every time I try to do better, he's pulling my chain. She's pulling my chain. I want to come out of this, but they're pulling my chain. And you say, God, my passions uh, and my affections uh, and my appetite uh, is wrapped up inside of them. Uh, but God said, you need to come to Jesus uh, so I can give you rivers of living water. Uh, you live and say, God, uh, it is rivers of living water uh, that will break the yoke, uh, that will lift the body, uh, that will break the chain, uh, that will break the devil. Again. I'm 
again, the drug dealer again. I'm back again around people. I know they don't care nothing about me. They talk about me as soon as I get up and leave. The family members talk about me as soon as I get up and leave. They don't care nothing about me. I don't got nowhere to go. Don't nobody care nothing about me. They say that they're my family, but they're really not there for me. They say that they're my friend. See, somebody is pulling on your chain yes. and got you going through life following them. But Jesus told them, he said, listen, follow me. And says to God, when you want to break out, you got to follow Jesus. He said, come to me. Come to me. When I came to Jesus, he gave me rivers of living water. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost gets down inside of you, he starts changing your passions and changing your desires yeah. and changing your appetites and changing your emotions. Yeah. You hear me say, God, come to me. How do I break it? You break it on the altar. You break it. Get rivers of living water. You eat the Holy Ghost. Rivers are streams. Mm -hmm. Rivers are floods. I need the Holy Ghost to flood my life. Yes. In the natural, we don't like floods. But in the spiritual, I love floods. Yes. God, flood my house. Flowing. 
Saints of God, you need rivers of living water. You need rivers of living water. So it can constantly be a flow in your spirit. Oh, yes. When I got rivers of living water, I start flushing out everything that wasn't of God. Yes. Everything that I collected over the years, I start flushing it out. The Spirit of God start flushing all that out. All that hurt that you feel in your heart. All that rejection and that pain that you feel in your heart. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost will flush it out. You hear me, Saints God? Let me show you the antidote to pain when somebody hurt you. Let me give you the antidote. Some of you ain't going to receive it because you're not spiritual minded. But the antidote to pain when somebody hurt you or abused you or whatever is forgiveness. forgiveness. How do you learn that? You learn that because you got rivers of living water, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes. When you forgive them, guess what? They can't hurt you anymore because you done got it out your spirit. You hear me say to God? So you got to move from stagnant waters and move to rivers of living waters. God flushing it out. Flush out the hurt. Oh, yeah. Flush out the rejection. Flush out who left me. Flush out who don't like me. Flush out stuff that I put in my spirit over the years. Now I got a river. So you got to tell them, yeah. now I got a river. Now I got a river of living water flowing in my life. They said, now, why didn't you say it the most? Something happened to you. I remember you 10 years ago. You always were sad when I used to see you. And you was always defeated down in the dumps. Never had a good word for nobody. But now you got a glow on your face. Now we see that you got some joy in your heart. What happened to you? But thanks to God, when somebody asked you what happened to you, so I got rivers of living water. I got the Holy Ghost living down inside of me. I was the red mountain, blood washer. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Rivers always flowing. I got rivers out of your belly. It ain't going to stay in, it's going to come out. And it's going to flow into the life of other people. Yeah. I told you when you got rivers of living water, you got something to give to somebody else. When you got rivers of living water, you got encouragement to give to somebody else. When you got rivers of living water, you can pick up somebody else. When you got rivers of living water, you can script to somebody else. Yeah. You hear me, Jessica? I got rivers, rivers. of living waters oh, yes. flowing out of my belly. Yes. Flow means to move. This is fresh, thanks to God. This is Zoe. This is the God kind of life that I'm talking about. Oh my God. See, rivers of living water are always moving. In Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And the earth was formless. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the waters. Because the Spirit of God is always moving. I told you that rivers of living water is always moving. That's why you need God in your life because God is always moving. God will move out the trash, move out the hurt, move out the depression. God is always moving. The Spirit of God is always moving. The Bible says the Spirit of God began to move on Samson. And when the Spirit of God began to move upon Samson, Samson began to change. Saints of God, you need the Spirit of God to move in your life so you can begin to change and walk in the purpose of God. He's always moving. Rivers of living water coming to a close. Oh my God. Acts, the second chapter, verse 1 through 4. It was all in one place on one accord. And the Bible said, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. Oh my God. And filled the house where they was at. It appeared like clothing tongues of fire. It shot down on each one of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost was moving. Yeah. And say some water. If you want rivers of living water, you got to drink the water. They say, give me rivers of living water. Yes. Yes. Rivers of living water. The reason why I come and say here that the Spirit of God was not given yet was because Jesus was not yet glorified. Which means Jesus had to die first, be crucified, and raised again from the dead before he, before he gave him the Holy Ghost. He told him, I'm going to send back the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But first I got to be crucified, I got to be put in the tomb, and I got to raise up again from the dead. He said, when I raise up again from the dead, I'm going to send back the Holy Ghost. Do you hear me, saints of God? So on the day of Pentecost, Acts the second chapter, verse 1 through 4, they was there waiting for the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost showed up and filled them with Holy Ghost and power. Do you hear me, saints of God? Because the Holy Ghost is always moving. When you glorify Jesus, when you magnify Jesus, yes. Some of us don't magnify Jesus. This is because we can't get rivers of living water. Saints of God, we won't lift our hands. We won't open our mouth unto God. We won't glorify Jesus. We won't magnify Jesus. Guess what? You will never get rivers of living water. But saints of God, when you start magnifying Jesus, when you give him his due, 
When you begin to worship him. When you begin to say that Jesus is worthy. I got a revelation. As I was pondering on his word. Asking God for revelation to give to you. I asked God for revelation to give to me so I can help me and help you. And it came in my spirit. It said, remember when the mothers was on the altar and the older saints was on the altar, the older men of God, and they came up to the altar beside you and said, baby, keep calling on Jesus. Why was they telling you to keep calling on Jesus? Because they were trying to get you to glorify Jesus. Yeah. They knew if you glorify Jesus, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost who remembers the living water. So they kept saying, call on Jesus. Yes. Another mother will come into your ear and say, baby, give it up. Give it up on the altar. Be here and say, God. Because they knew when you glorify Jesus. Yeah. That river of living waters that you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. They said, no, baby, that ain't no real yes. They said, no, you ain't doing no playing. They said, no, you got to come from your belly and tell God yes. Jesus, but there are certain things that we have not given up yet. I want to talk to you, saints of God. 